So as you could probably guess, this is in fact an episode of Mitsuchan's Upgrades. I just have to run out of daylight, so I am filming in the house today. Pushing that aside, we are talking about putting on new brakes and rotors onto a 2003 Mitsubishi OZ Rally Edition Lancer. Now, these brakes for me were critical because I live in Virginia. Virginia has a lot of stop and go traffic. It is constant, it never ends here. So, I wanted something that had a lot more stopping power and was also a much beefier stopping system. So, I needed to get new rotors and I needed to get new pads. Also, my car had a horrendous wiggle. It would constantly go back and forth. So I wanted to do something that was a lot more stable and a lot easier on my hands. You guys recall the trip to New York, halfway through that, going to New York, my hand actually went numb because this is my steering hand and the steering wheel is doing this for two or three hours and my arm just started to fall asleep so I had to stop. So these rotors were critical to help stabilize the car again because the old ones were kind of out of shape. So we're putting on EBC Stage 9 Rally Rotors. So happy, so excited. As of this point, I've actually been able to drive the car a bit, and those rotors are nice. They're very nice. They stop unbelievably quickly, and that's in conjunction with the yellow stuff EBC pads that came with this rotor set I bought on CarID.com. They are slotted, but not slotted like all the way through like you see on some cars. These are partially slotted, so it just allows for more stopping surfaces, if that makes sense, more edges to hit. It also allows for some of the snow and the dust and the ice and all that fun stuff to basically not coat the brakes, but allow for it to get pocketed, channeled, and pushed out. So it's definitely a very useful upgrade for my car, at least I know, I know, I hear all kinds of people shouting in the background, oh, what blanks are better, they last longer. That's not the point. I need the stopping power, if that's what's important. So with this combination of EBC Stage 9 brakes and these pads, we have achieved a huge improvement. They are now stopping my car 10 to 20 feet shorter than what they were before. I even tested it with my brother in the car to have additional weight as if it were me and another passenger. And coming up to a stop, it was several feet before a stop sign. You know, I was braking where I normally would and I was coming to a stop a lot faster. So these are definitely, definitely a major improvement over what was already there. All that said, let's just break down some of the tools that you'll need. Obviously, we're jacking up the car because we need to get wheels off of the car. That said, you need to find the right size lugs for your car. Now, my car is a size 21, uh, 21 millimeter that is. So, got my tire iron out, you'll see in the video upcoming. Crack those bolts, pull those jokers off. After that, you will have size 17 millimeter lugs on the back of the caliper, the caliper bolts that hold it in place. After that's done, you will need to use a brake compression tool. So what this is, is it basically pushes the brake piston back into the allocated slot that's supposed to go into. Also, a couple things that'll be mad handy would be a nice set of gloves, because it's very greasy in there, very dirty, obviously, because it's in contact with all the elements outside, as well as a hammer. Believe it or not, you want to use a hammer to crack some of these bolts, especially if you don't have, you know, one of those drill driver type things that can just basically rattle the jokers off. So this is probably going to be the way that you're going to have to do this if you don't have your own fully functional garage. That's just my recommendation as a rookie going into this myself. All of that said, let's move on to the video. All right, let's get to it here. Obviously, you want to jack up the car and then begin to crack the bolts, removing them one at a time. That's just wisdom, that way the tire does not fall off. Mine again has a 21 millimeter. That's what I use. Next step is to lubricate and remove the caliper bolts. These bolts are extremely tight, so using WD-40 to break through any rust and grime is gonna be crucial and necessary. There's two of them, so be aware, you'll need to spray both. And grab that handy 17 mil. Pop it on there, 
and this is when you're going to want to use your hammer to try and crack the bolts these again are extremely tight even with WD-40 so take your time because well let's be honest for me this took a long time 20 minutes in fact after finally getting those off remove the caliper and the rotor and now to keep your brake line straight just stick the rotor on top of the disc brake flange that's what's you can see there and that is nasty and then you install a new rotor pretty <laughs> once you have that set take out the old pads and shins out of the original brakes that were on there there's going to be small pieces of metal as you can see those are going to be the shims that hold the brakes in place and will also let you know when the brakes are wore out these are going to be extremely useful on the new brakes now that those are off as you can see go ahead and grab your new brakes in my case these are ebc yellow stuff and put those on Next, you'll want to use the brake compression tool to push the old piston back into position. Now, to start with, you're going to need to use the J bracket, that's the actual brake pad looking one, to fit it into one side and then use whatever letter fits on your piston. Once those are in place and you've pushed the piston in, install the new brakes. The shims are going to be critical to help make sure things are in place where they're supposed to be. And this does take a little bit, but once you got those fitted correctly, slide that rotor on and start putting in the bolts. After this, it's pretty straightforward. All you're doing is putting the bolts back in and putting the tire back on. And that's all there is to it. Once you get this on, definitely take your time breaking in the new uh, pads as well as the rotor itself. It does take a bit. And of course, using your cross diamond pattern to get your tires back on.